My name is Jessica Finzen. I'm a professor of mathematics based at the University of Bonn and I'm an invited speaker here at the IGS Summer School. Well, that happened somehow gradually by accident, more or less. So when I was a grad student, I just needed somehow a thesis problem. So I was looking around and I attended a summer school back then. And at the summer school, I was really excited about one of the lectures that one of the professors gave. So I read a bit more about what this person had done, a recent paper, and I just found an open problem there that I solved that became my thesis. And that, that wasn't the local language correspondence yet. That was about the structure of periodic groups. And then it involved, and over time, I was then studying the representations of periodic groups, which are one side of the language correspondence. So the local language correspondence is a, the idea that the representations of periodic groups are somehow in deep connection with, lang, uh, with L parameters, with number theoretic information. And so it just happened that I gradually got into, uh, into this area of the language correspondence coming from the representations of periodic groups. Um, so I think a moment that made me really happy is not the biggest result, but my first big result when I was a grad student. And I think because that was the first time, I mean, how to say, so I was working on a project which I was hoping should become my PhD thesis so that I can graduate and get my, my PhD, my degree. And I was just completely stuck on it. And I spent months and months just sitting in the common room of the math department trying to solve it. And I was very close to giving up. And maybe nowadays I would have given up. But back then I was just so focused on it because I wanted to graduate. And then there was just one moment where suddenly the idea came to my mind. And I think I will never forget that moment because it was in the end so simple. And I was wondering why didn't I come up with it earlier? And it was just so nice and clean. And, that made me really happy. And it meant that I could graduate and become a mathematician. I think the summer school well, has several different goals and I'm mainly thinking of it as a service to, to the math community and to the next generation. So I think there, there are many things to take out of it. First of all, we learn a, a lot of interesting mathematics. Uh, we have very interesting uh, lectures going on. But I think a very important aspect is also to get to know each other, so in particular for the new mathematicians, the early career mathematicians, to get to know each other, get to know the lecturers. I think that's a very important part of it and to, to form new collaborations, to find new ideas for projects to work on. So it's, I think the networking aspect of it is, is very important. And then I think last but not least, this conference also should have some important influence on the future. So we are writing proceedings and we recorded all the talks. So we hope that mathematicians in the future will profit from the summer school as well. So it's not just for the hundred people who are here, but it's for, for a much broader audience. And there are a lot joining us also virtually. So it's, it's really nice to have this third aspect of it. Well, that's difficult. I think I've enjoyed everything so far. The summer school is very well planned and thought through. So I think the organizers have done an excellent job. Um, yeah, I've learned a lot. I've met a lot of interesting people. I think what I, as a speaker, find very interesting is to see how excited the students are, um, the postdocs and grad students, and they ask so many questions. And so to really be excited about learning, and that's, I think, an aspect I really enjoy to interact with them and try to answer as many questions as I can, but of course also show that my knowledge is limited and learn myself a lot of new things. Um, that's a good question. I think just being very interested and wanting to know the answer, like solving a mystery, like when, when you have a puzzle that you want to solve, just you really want to solve it and um, yeah, just being fascinated by it. And, and often what also happens when you try to solve something, you think you have solved it and then you realize, oh, there's a small mistake. It's actually much more complicated. That makes the problem often much more interesting. And then you encounter new things. And then when you move forward, you just find out a lot of new things that you haven't thought about before. I think that's very interesting. And just, yeah, the idea of 
trying to want to resolve the mystery and understand why are these things the way they are and how can we solve them. I think that's very motivating. And also, of course, to keep in mind the nice feeling of when you actually solve things. I think that's also good motivation. Um, that's a tough question <laughs> and it's not always clear. Um, I think when I just notice that I run in circles and repeat the same ideas over and over again and don't get an anywhere, then I think I just try to put the problem aside and think about a different idea, a different project and maybe try to come back when I have a different idea. Or maybe I try to talk to people and um, see if others have others ide uh, other ideas or think it's maybe a good idea to put it aside. So yeah, I think just when you notice that you just don't get anywhere, it might be helpful to reorient, orient, do something else and keep this in the back of your mind and come back when you have a new idea. Mm -hmm.